One of the most common questions we get here at Pro Photo Tips is, what kind of filter I should buy for the making of awesome picture? So stay tuned to find out. Greetings, voice activated tripods, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. There are a million and two photographic filters on the market. Some can actually help you take better photos, and some are designed simply to separate you from your cold, hard cash. Here's my humble opinion on which filters are actually worth getting. The UV is probably the most common filter in photography and the one that serves the least purpose. Now there are lots of great things to do with a UV filter. Use it as a coaster, play frisbee with it, turn it into a monocle. Hmm. But in all honesty, I can't really recommend putting one on your lens. They're less optically pure than your lens glass is and they serve as an easy surface for dust, scratches, and fingerprints to land on. But what about the protection? True, the best reason to put a UV filter on your lens is protection. But it's kind of like wrapping your car in styrofoam to prevent accidents. 99% of the time, it's just going to be in the way. The way I see it is, if you habitually drop your camera onto its lens, or if you're shooting in a howling sandstorm, then sure, toss a UV filter on there. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Next, we have an actually useful filter, the polarizer. In fact, the polarizer is pretty much the only filter whose effects you can't replicate in Photoshop, so this is a must-have for any photographer. And what a polarizer does is block scattered light, helping to remove haze from your photos, improving color saturation, and in deepening the blue of the sky. Polarizers also cut reflections, giving improved depth, clarity, and color, to the plants, rocks, and water in your images. The solid neutral density filter is probably the most fun of all the filters because it lets you manipulate time. This filter simply cuts the amount of light entering your camera. And while there's a multitude of applications for that across the different genres, in nature photography, it's used almost exclusively to increase your shutter speed. This lets you pull off some great long exposure effects, from getting that silky waterfall look to smoothing out cloud movement. And with a strong enough ND, like this 10-stop, you can even do super long exposures in bright daylight, leading to some really surreal and beautiful results. My final filter of choice is the graduated neutral density filter. Like the solid ND, this blocks light from entering your camera, but only in part of your frame because it fades from dark to clear. This is perfect for when part of the scene is much brighter than another part, like, oh, say, a brilliant sunset. Now, you've likely run into this problem a million times. Shoot a gorgeous sunset, and either your foreground goes totally dark or your sky gets totally blown out. Enter the Grad ND filter to darken the sky with respect to the foreground, and all of a sudden you've got a perfect exposure with beautiful painterly light. Now, truth be told, these filters are becoming less and less necessary as camera sensors improve their dynamic range, and because you can get the same effect by combining exposures in Photoshop. But I still consider them essential anytime I'm shooting a scene with lots of dynamic range where there's movement and I need to nail the shot in a single exposure. And that's it. As far as I'm concerned, you don't need any other filters because they're either too gimmicky or you can get the effect another way. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our videos to see how to use each of these filters for the best possible results. And if you like this video, please share it, sub it, give it a thumbs up. You can also join our newsletter to stay up to date with the latest tips, tutorials, and courses. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting. What kind of, what kind of picture?
I mean, this isn't even a UV filter, it's a lid to a jar, but serves about as much purpose as far as your photography is concerned.